Good evening, sisters and brothers, and uh, welcome to this evening's evening prayer. And so we come to the end of another day to give God thanks for his goodness and mercy to us this past day and to cast all our cares and our concerns and our burdens on him because he cares for us. And so let's pray as we, we end this day. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. Now, as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions, cleanse us from our Cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We have come before God's holy mountain to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. We have come before countless angels making festival before the assembly of the firstborn citizens of heaven. We have come before God who is judge of all, before the spirits of the just made perfect. We have come before Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So let us give thanks and offer to God acceptable worship, full of reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We have come before the throne of God to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Amen and uh, collect for this week and today as we are remembering Clement Bishop of Rome and Martyr around the year 100. So first the collect for this week and there are two collects of course the, the collect for Christ the King Sunday and the collect for the last Sunday in, Ad, in the church year before Advent. Eternal Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for Saint Clement, the Bishop of Rome, martyr around the year 100. Creator and Father of Eternity, whose martyr Clement bore witness with his blood to the love he proclaimed and the gospel that he preached. Give us thankful hearts as we celebrate your faithfulness revealed to us in the lives of your saints and strengthen us in our pilgrimage as we follow your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our psalm this evening is Psalm 122, Psalm 122. <clears throat> psalm 122, first the refrain. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are, are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. <clears throat> Jerusalem, built as a city that is at unity in itself. Thither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as is decreed by, for Israel. I give thanks to the name of the Lord, for there, are, for there are set the thrones of David, the thrones of the house of David. Oh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and tranquility within your palaces. For my kindred and companions' sake, I will pray that peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do your good. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord God of hosts. And our prayer, God of our pilgrimage, bring us with joy to the eternal city founded on the rock and give to our earthly cities the peace that comes from above. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So in one sense, this psalm is about Jerusalem. Yes, it is about in 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 in, real, in the first instance, it's about the peace of Jerusalem. But of course, we know that Jerusalem it, there is an what what theologians call an eschatological Jerusalem. That is, there is a Jerusalem at the end of history, at the end of time, and that is the city of God. The full it's called Jerusalem because it it's modeled of the or the the, the of the Jerusalem that is on earth. But it's a Jerusalem that's in heaven, the eternal city of God. But in between those two Jerusalems, there is another Jerusalem. There's another place where God dwells. Because sisters and brothers, if you remember, Jerusalem is a symbol of the place where God dwells, the city of God. The, 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 and, so, and because we know now, of course, that God doesn't dwell in in, in bricks and mortars, God dwell in people. And so the new Jerusalem, the present Jerusalem, are the people of God, what, what, what the New Testament calls the church. And so in a sense, yes, there is an old Jerusalem. There is a present Jerusalem, which is the people of God. And then there is a future Jerusalem, which is the entire world that is transformed into a city where God dwells. And so, yes, this psalm has all of those applications. On the one hand, we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and every city in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the world. We are to pray, as the collect talks about the earthly cities. We are to pray for the peace of every earthly city, not, in, not, not, not least Jerusalem, which is still the ancient Jerusalem, the earthly Jerusalem is still pretty much um, a violent and conflicting place. 
So yes, pray for that. But but pray for for God's peace to reign in in the present Jerusalem, that is in his people, in his church. So pray that for the peace of God to reign in the hearts and lives of his people everywhere. And finally, we are to pray that that peace will come in the in the future Jerusalem, in the final Jerusalem, the 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 complete city of God when the whole world will be transformed into a, a new Jerusalem, that God's peace will reign supreme ultimately on the earth. And so, yeah, so there we have a lot to pray for in terms of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is a city that has eternal consequences, not just the physical piece of real estate in the Middle East, but that that was merely a symbolic representation of the true Jerusalem, which is A, the people of God, and B, the, the eternal city where God dwells. Amen. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. Um, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 19 is our Old Testament reading this evening Isaiah chapter 19 and all of it uh, yes all of it So we've been looking at God's punishment for various countries, various people. We've seen where God is going to punish the Assyrians and the Israelites, and he's going to punish Ethiopia. And now, chapter 19, we read where God is going to punish, um, punish, uh, yes, chapter 19. God is going to punish Egypt. This is a message about Egypt. The Lord is coming to Egypt, riding swiftly on a cloud. The Egyptian idols tremble before him, and the people of Egypt lose their courage. The Lord says, I will stir up civil war in Egypt and turn brother against brother and neighbor against neighbor. Rival cities will fight each other. The rival kings will struggle for power. I am going to frustrate the plans of the Egyptians and destroy their morale. They will ask their idols to help them and they will go and consult mediums and ask the spirits of the dead for advice. I, have hand, I will hand the Egyptians over to a tyrant, a, to a cruel king who will rule them. I, the Lord Almighty, have spoken. The water will be low in the Nile and the river will gradually dry up. The channels of the river will stink as they slowly go dry. Reeds and, and rushes will wither and all the crops sown along the banks of the Nile will dry up and be blown away. Everyone who earns his living by fishing in the Nile will groan and cry. Their hooks and their nets will be useless. Those who make linen cloth will be in despair. Weavers and skilled workers will be broken and depressed. The leaders of the city of Zoan are fools. Egypt's wisest people give stupid advice. How dare they tell the king that they are successors to the ancient scholars and kings? King of Egypt, where are those clever advisors of yours? Perhaps they can tell you what plans the Lord Almighty has for Egypt. The leaders of Zon and Memphis are fools. They were supposed to lead the nation, but they have misled it. The Lord has made them give confusing advice. As a result, Egypt does everything wrong and staggers like a drunken man slipping on his own vomit. No one in Egypt, rich or poor, important or unknown, can offer help. 
A time is coming when the people of Egypt will be as timid as women. They will tremble in terror when they see that the Lord Almighty has stretched out his hand to punish them. The people of Egypt will be terrified of Judah every time they are reminded of the fate that the Lord Almighty has prepared for them. When that time comes, the Hebrew language will be spoken in five Egyptian cities. The people there will take their oaths in the name of the Lord Almighty. One of the cities will be called City of the Sun. When that time comes, there will be an altar to the Lord in the land of Egypt and a stone pillar dedicated to him at the Egyptian border. They will, be, they will be symbols of the Lord Almighty's presence in Egypt. When the people there are oppressed and call out to the Lord for help, he will send someone to rescue them. The Lord will reveal himself to the Egyptian people, and then they will acknowledge and worship him and bring him sacrifices and offerings. They will make solemn promises to him and do what they promise. The Lord will punish the Egyptians, but then he will heal them. They will turn to him, and he will hear their prayers and heal them. When that time comes, there will be a highway between Egypt and Assyria. The people of those two countries will travel to and fro between them, and the two nations will worship together. When that time comes, Israel will rank with Egypt and Assyria, and these three nations will be a blessing to all the world. The Lord Almighty will bless them and say, I will bless you, Egypt, my people, you, Assyria, whom I created, and you, Israel, my chosen people. Amen. It's amazing. That time is now, sisters and brothers, when Egypt and Assyria uh, now the people of God, no longer just Israel, but Egypt, enemies of Israel, Assyria, enemies of Israel, are now considered part of the people of God. The time is coming when, when frankly, the whole world will, will turn to, to God. But the point is, is that Egypt, the persecutor of God's people, will be punished, but God's punishment will not be total. It will be a punishment that leads to repentance of the people. And the people of Egypt will turn to God. And no longer will God only just have one group of people. He will have three, Egypt, Assyria, and Israel. And that is, that is the time which, is, which we are living in. Because Jesus Christ is the one who ushered in that time. He's the one who brought into, into existence the time when Egypt and Assyria becomes the people of God as well as Israel. Amen. Let's move on to our New Testament reading, which is Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 10 from verse 16 to 33. Matthew 10. 16 to 33. <clears throat> Listen, I am sending you out just like sheep to a pack of wolves. You must be as cautious as snakes and as gentle as doves. Watch out, for there will be those who will arrest you and take you to court, and they will whip you in the synagogues. For my sake, you will be brought to trial before, before rulers and kings to tell the good news to them and to the Gentiles. When they bring you to trial, do not worry about what you are going to say or how you will say it. When the time comes, you will be given what you will say. For the words you will speak will not be yours. They will come from the spirit of your father speaking through you. 
Men will hand over their own brothers to be put to death. And fathers will do the same to their children. Children will turn against their parents and have them put to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but whoever holds out to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, run away to another one. I assure you that you will not finish your work in all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. No pupil is greater than his teacher. No slave is greater than his master. When a, so a pupil should be satisfied to become like his teacher and a slave like his master. If the head of the family is called Beelzebub, the members of the family will be called even worse names. Uh, 33. So do not be afraid of people. Whatever is now covered up will be uncovered, uh, and every secret will be made known. What I am telling you in the dark, you must repeat in broad daylight. And what you have heard in private, you must announce from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of God, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. For only, a, for only a penny, you can buy two sparrows. Yet not one sparrow falls to the ground without your father's consent. As for you, even the hairs of your head have all been counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth much more than many sparrows. For those who declare publicly that they belong to me, I will do the same before my Father in heaven. But if anyone rejects me publicly, I will reject him before my Father in heaven. Amen. All right, so um, on the one hand, we have the, the continuing instructions of Jesus to the, to the 12 disciples who were commissioned in the first part of this chapter to go out into the, into the community, into the surrounding communities and help people and proclaim the gospel and now Jesus is uh, while he's still speaking to them he's speaking more broadly now and he says I'm sending you out just like sheep to a pack of wolves so so one of the things sisters and brothers that we must remember is that we the, the people of God when we go out into the world we are like sheep before wolves and, 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 and that's why it is such a difficult task. Because wolves destroy sheep. Wolves try to tear sheep to pieces. And Jesus says, I am sending you out like, like, like sheep, like lambs among a pack of wolves. The world is a pack of wolves. And we are the, the, the sacrificial sheep. And, and, and sisters and brothers, Jesus sends us out into that pack of wolves. And he says we are not to be afraid when we go out. Um, he says you must, we are to be cautious like snakes and gentle as doves. In other words, we are to be, we are to be cunning. We are well, not cunning. Cunning is not the right word. We are to be wise. That's the word. We are to be wise like serpents. We are to be careful in how we go about proclaiming the gospel but we are also to be gentle gentle in our handling of people in our dealing with people we are to be gentle in our in our response to people's objections uh, and so on so so the sheep uh, are, are going in front of wolves but we are to be gentle uh, you see and, and and i know the wolves are never gentle but we are to be gentle. And, and he goes on to tell us that we, we are not to be afraid. Um, verse 26, the do not be afraid of people. Uh, you know, and he said uh, in verse, in verse 20, 29, 28, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather be afraid of God, who is able to destroy both body and soul, you see. There's no point in we being afraid of those who only can just kill the body, Jesus said. 
The wolves can only destroy this, this, this physical structure. But instead, we are to fear God, who has the power to destroy both body and spirit. He is the one we are to fear, not the people, not the wolves in, uh, in the context in which we are sent. And so, sisters and brothers, it's, it's a poignant story, and we are to keep that in mind, because we are called to go out there and to tell people the good news of Jesus. But be mindful that we are, we are lambs in the midst of wolves. And that is why we get so much opposition. That is why we get so much hate and so much bile against our faith and against, uh, and against our Lord. But do not be afraid of them. Because all they can do is kill this body. You see, not the soul. In God is the one who can do that. And so, we, you know, we are, it goes on, I, I, I must stop, but it says, as you, even the hairs of your head have been counted. So do not be afraid. You know, God looks after the sparrows, so he's going to care for you. You are worth far much more than sparrows. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us to the end of another day. So, Lord, we pray even as we reflect on the fact that we are sheep in the midst of wolves in this world. We, we pray that you strengthen us as we proclaim the good news of Jesus, especially as we come up to Christmas and we, we seek to proclaim that message in, through leaflets, through, through our lives, through our carol singing and the various things that we do individually in our lives and in our church community. Lord, you know, this is a reminder to us that the wolves are hostile to your message, to your gospel, and yet we are not to be afraid. And so give us the grace, Lord, not to shrink back, but to advance, to be gentle, and yet to be wise. Give us that grace, we pray to juggle those two attributes, we pray, so that we will not lose heart, we will not, uh, we will not become aggressive as well, like the wolves instead give us, make us gentle like sheep. Like we, so Lord, we pray for this. We ask that you will be with us tonight, and in all of our endeavors each day, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those in our hearts and those we've been praying for in our own community. And so we pray. We pray for, I want to pray for Pat, because uh, Pat has not been well the last two weeks. Pray for Pat and Ray at this time. We pray also, as we've been praying, we pray for Jean Murphy, Joanna, Hannah, Daphne, Sue, Veronica, and Chester, uh, Jean and Walter, Monica, Auntie Janie, <coughs> Maxine, as she recovers from her surgery, Muriel, David, Tosin, our sister Tosin, knee, as um, she mourns the passing of her mom, and Maxine again, uh, who mourns the passing of her dad, Hugh, and, and as she and the family arrange for the funeral, arrange funeral, um, the farewell service for him, and pray that the Lord will be with them and all those who have lost loved ones. We pray for Surya uh, in the hospital. We ask that, Lord, that you will bring healing and strength to her body. We pray for our sister Joanna as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for the people of Indonesia and the, that terrible earthquake that has killed so many. And just so, uh, oh God, we pray that you will have mercy on those people. 
O God. For those who have died, we pray that you will receive their spirit. And for those who are left behind, we pray that you will mend their spirit, their broken spirit, or mend the broken bodies and give them hope in the future, we pray. All those who have lost loved ones, comfort them, God. Comfort them at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I continue to pray for the people of Ukraine. Oh God, we ask for intervention in that war. We ask, oh God, that you will bring an end to that war. Save those people. Deliver them from Putin's weapons of war, oh God. And destroy Putin's war, war machine, oh God. And bring them victory. Bring the Ukrainian people victory, oh God, over their, over their aggressor. Oh God, we pray. Have mercy on them. Bring an end to this war so that the suffering of those people will end. Oh God, have mercy on the people of Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our night prayer, guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace and rest tonight, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good night, sisters and brothers.